In the last section, we kicked off our next application by installing a boilerplate project that contains a little bit of code to help us get started on this little tray icon application we're going to be working on. We installed all the dependencies for the project. I want to spend a little bit of time now to talk about some of the boilerplate that we downloaded and explain some of the code that sits inside of here already and talk about exactly how we're going to work with it. So I've taken the liberty of already opening up my code editor. So here's all the project files right here. You'll notice that there's an existing SRC directory inside of here, along with a couple of other top level files. Now, trust me, I understand, maybe you don't feel this way yet. Let me, let me put that little interjection there. I'm gonna say, maybe you don't feel this way yet, but I personally feel as though going into a tutorial or a course like this, where a lot of code is already written for you, can be really challenging to understand, okay, wait, like what code are we adding versus what code did Steven already give us Who's writing what code here and what are we actually doing with all this stuff, right? It's kind of tough to figure out exactly what's going on when you're in a course and you're being given some completed code. At least that's how I feel, maybe you don't. So I wanna spend a little bit of time to talk about exactly what we downloaded here, just to make sure that it's really crystal clear what we're going to be writing versus what is already provided to us, okay? So let's talk about some of the architecture of this application when everything's said and done. We're gonna talk about exactly how it's all going to be fitting these different pieces of the puzzle together. Okay, so on the left-hand side, we've seen this diagram before, right? We've looked at this thing several times. We've said that whenever we kick off our Electron application, it starts up an Electron process on our local machine. Then inside that Electron process, we spin up a brand new process that represents the main window of our application, or the window that's going to actually display some content to the user. Now in the past, we had said, okay, we'll load some HTML document inside of there. We had a single HTML document, and we put all of the logic for the UI layer of our application directly in there. So we had a couple of HTML tags, we had a script tag that added some interactive functionality for the user to play around with. This time, however, we're saying that we want to have a lot more client-side logic, a lot more client-side UI that the user can interact with and make changes to this timer application and start and stop and blah, 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 just all this built-in functionality into the client side of the app. So to build an application with that level of functionality, I decided to make use of the React.js library. Now, if you're not familiar with React, if you are taking this course and you never t touched React before in the past, do not sweat it. You really do not need to know anything particular about React. And certainly if we do, I'm gonna make sure that I explain exactly what's going on with the React side in great, great detail. So again, the idea here was that I wanted to build an application with a lot of interaction with the user, something very dynamic. And so that's really the place of React. That's where it makes a lot of sense to pull in React to give the user a bunch of buttons and timers and automatic updating text and all this other stuff that we're going to see when we start actually running the application. To build the application, we're making use of something called the Webpack server. So Webpack is a module bundler that's commonly used with React, and it's essentially used to take a bunch of React-specific code, join a bunch of different files together, and give one final React application as the output. So we build this React application, and then we're loading it up into the index.html file. Let's open up the index.html file and just take a quick look at the contents because one does already exist inside of our project directory. So inside of the SRC folder, you'll find the index.html file. So this looks like more or less like the HTML documents that we were working with previously. We've got a head tag, we've got a body tag, and then a script tag down at the bottom. So this script tag right here, this is the magic. This script tag right here is pulling in the entire compiled, bundled up JavaScript React application for us. So that's really what is doing the connection from the Webpack and React side over to the Electron side. That is what's pulling the React application into the Electron side of our app. The actual React application that we're going to be working with is contained within this SRC directory. So inside of SRC, we have all the different React code and all the different components and stuff like that to put this application together. And in fact, if you open up the index.js file, you'll see some certainly React-specific looking code up at the top here. 
Again, if you're familiar with React, certainly feel free to pause the video and take a glance at some of the different components that you see inside of here. We're going to walk through a couple of these, or I should say one or two components at a future point in time, so we certainly will get a better idea of what's going on on the React side as well. Okay, so again, just want to spend a little bit of time to tell you a little bit about some of the code that's already included inside of here. The entire React side of the application is really put together for us. We are going to be responsible for putting together all the Electron side of this application. So we're going to put together the Electron application, bootstrap that thing, get it created. We're going to make a window to display the React application. And then we're going to spend a lot of time figuring out how to get a tray icon to properly show up on both OS X and Windows. So again, the big challenges of this application are all revolving around the Electron side of things and not quite so much about what's going on inside of this little window right here. Okay, so with all that disclaimer done, let's continue in the next section and we'll get started working on this application.